Hello, welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to show you some techniques with pen and ink using a straight pen, a nib, and a pot of ink and a squirrel mop brush to spread all of your gorgeous colors around. And I'm going to show you some hatching, cross hatching, uh, dashes, dots, and blending. And I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I do. When you're using pen and ink, we don't use, we're not going to use a pencil, we're going to go straight in with our nib and our ink. And we're going to study our uh, subject matter first to decode it, to break it down to the simplest forms, where to start, uh, what to put in front. And you'll get yourself a lovely little study. And today, we're going to do a feather, one little feather. So welcome. Welcome back. So glad you've come back to learn some more about lovely pen and ink. Um, I use a straight pen like this. This is a very gorgeous one. Had it for a long time, but as I uh, as I've discovered, you can find them in wood, painted wood, plain wood, turned wood, all sorts of gorgeous combinations, and glass. I have a wonderfully very unrealistic glass pen here. Unrealistic because it's so long. Normally you wouldn't want a pen that would be heavy like that at the end. But it is very pretty to look at, even though it comes apart. So what I'm going to do is show you some simple stages of drawing this feather that might look complicated, but we're going to simple it down. But first I'm just going to show you some marks, shake up the gold in this bottle and show you some marks that are very traditional pen and ink marks. I'm just going to dip my pen in my ink, scrape it off. Now, if you have a new nib that isn't catching your ink, you might just need to give it a flame, just like that, just a second, with a lighter or a match. They put a finish on nibs that sometimes causes the ink to uh, bead and it won't flow. So this this is flowing. So I've just put a little spots on there, but I'll move my feather and just show you some basic marks. So here are fine lines, thicker lines, fine lines, all depends on the pressure you employ. Here are hatching lines, quite fine ones, wavy hatching. Or, or just wavy, just trying to have one width of line. You'll have to repeat dipping all the time. But the good thing about a pen like this and the nibs like this is that you do have a variety of lines. If you use a fine felt pen, you get the same line all the time. Great for perhaps commercial art, but this is really wonderful for having some variety in your lines and your contours. So hatching, fine hatching, and then cross hatching to put shadow in a particular place, and dotting, just little pointillism, little dots that can make an area look dense without cross hatching. And you don't need to press hard or with your nib either. You can just be very light handed. So that's light, light, light. That's heavy, heavy. I get a thicker line. But if I were doing this little feather, I'd give myself the axis first. I'd just give myself the middle. And you can either work from the top or down to the bottom or the bottom up to the top. But I'm going to give it a little bit of contour very lightly. It's got lots and lots of fluff, but I'm just going to undulate this contour. And then I can do that on the other side as well, although it's not as wavy. So I'm going to look at that all the time you're looking at what you're, you're drawing. So there's the bottom of my little, all of this lovely uh, down. You can just make it very soft strokes. And we're going to get into water because I did promise you something with the squirrel mop. So here's this side. That's where it breaks. And back down. This is a much tidier edge. Not tidier, just smoother. But we can make it whatever we want. That's the whole idea. So the spine thins out to the top. You hardly see it. But I'm going to start putting some of my marks with just some hatching marks, just 
trying to emulate those that pattern on this owl feather. So you just spend some time doing that. And don't get bored, don't just do this because that was show. So you really want to make sure that you're you're looking and you're enjoying every moment of it. It's much denser here, so I will make my hatching smaller, but I'll have more of it slightly overlapping, so I have a darker line that suggests the pattern in these feathers. And again, there's all that lovely fluff. And you just go on and on until you get what you want. But I'd love to show you another way of arriving at a feather that is really fun and I'm just going to show you that and it's drawing with water so this is my squirrel mop this is a size zero in Raphael brand and I'm just going to do what I did before give myself my axis and then come along and with water just water draw my contour and I'm going to make sure there's enough water I'll just do one side and then dip my nib in and press it into my pipe of water in here. I call it a pipe, but once I was teaching some scientists and they said it wasn't a pipe, it was a tube. So you can do that, then dry off your brush, you have enough water, and just pull your ink in. And when it dries, you can put all sorts of detail on if you so choose. And another way is just using your brush and just drawing your feather and lying it down and moving your brush so you get some lovely shapes and down. Hardly touching the paper, just getting those lovely edges. I'm going to rinse my brush off so it's almost no ink in there and just come along pushing the nose of my brush right along that line so this side is going to be much lighter and then I'm going to get rid of all the ink altogether and use only what's on my paper and re-fluff here and there let it dry then I can go back in and put some detail it's good to leave it alone so you can really look and see what's happening makes a very interesting backdrop to whatever lines you put in. Then you go back to this very crisp, very traditional form of pen and ink. And sometimes it's a good idea to have, well, all the time it's a good idea to have another piece of paper going so that if you find your this is becoming tedious, you're not happy with it, put it aside, start something else. While that's drying, you go back to this with fresh eyes and more energy. You're going to get dirty. Uh, I do. I've always got inky fingers, but that's part of it, and that's a sort of badge of honor. So I'll go back into this for a moment, and facing the other side, and I'll just make some shapes rather than just hatching. I'll actually make some physical shapes with the, the pen. So it's it's really important to always experiment. If you run out of ink, just try dipping it in water, your pen in water. It will release whatever whatever paint you still have in there. Now just keep going, looking all the time at your subject. Once you do this, once you work from nature, from the actual physical shell or acorn or feather, flower, whatever you have in front of you, you start to see so much more. It's really, really wonderful. So there's three ways of doing a feather. This is not quite dry. If I try to go in into this very wet, I'll still get that wonderful bleeding effect, which is gorgeous. That's going to make a pattern too. Depends what you want. If you want something crisper, wait till it dries. But if you want something that's extremely natural looking, you can go in when it's wet. And this one, I've got a bloom here, which I think is gorgeous and very appropriate for something natural. And I can go in here if I want a little bit of Christmas, perhaps around my contour, and I can go in. But if I want to keep it very 
dreamy, then I can just maybe go in here or even press into my wet ink with the bottom of my brush. I can make some texture that way too. So there's so many options. I'm going to dip my brush in my ink and I can use a little bit of that to make some more down. But stop every once in a while, look what you're doing, do you like it, do you think it's finished? And you're the judge of that. I think less is more very frequently. So thank you very much for coming. I'll be back another day.